Hi everyone, welcome back to another art haul video. In this one, we're going to be looking at some orders from Jackson's Art, Colt Pens and Pure Pens. Most of the things you're going to see in this art haul are going to be from Jackson's, most of which were bought with my affiliate credit, um, some of which um, were bought with my own money if I didn't have enough affiliate credit, and obviously the orders from Colt Pens and Pure Pens um, were purchased with my own money. So nothing in this video is sponsored. I've been saving up several smaller orders since I think June. It was certainly before I was ill and I got ill at the beginning of July. So um, I've been waiting a long time <laughs> to really use these and I didn't want to use them until I had shown you. Um, I have actually unboxed all of the separate orders because that would have taken ages to actually get into all of the different packages. Um, so I unpackaged them, checked everything was there and okay, and I've popped them in this larger box. We're opening it on the studio floor today because it's too large for the desk. So yeah, without further ado, let's get in there and have a look at what I've bought. Okay, so as you can see, there are a lot of different products in here. Um, some of which I haven't actually used before, so they're new to me, so it'll be quite exciting to try them for the first time. Um, what should we start with? I think maybe these over here. So these are the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour markers. I haven't used them before, so I just got three of them in colours that appealed to me. I chose um, Earth Green, Dark Sepia and beige red. Um, I really love these kind of peachy pinky colours so I had to get something like that. I use that quite often in my landscapes, this kind of colour. Um, the dark sepia I thought would be good for trees like tree trunks and branches and wintry trees and the earth green is actually one of my favourite colours that Faber-Castell um, does. I have the polychromos pencil in earth green and it's one of my favourites. Um, I actually learned about these, I didn't even know they existed. I learned about them from Emma Carlyle, she has a Patreon and I was a patron of hers for a few months last year and um, then I stopped for a while and then I've rejoined recently. <laughs> so she was talking about these and I thought they looked really interesting. We can just open one up so I can show you the um, tips because they're double-ended. So you've got one that looks like that and the other end is like that. But we will swatch those in the next video and um, have a look at how they perform and what they feel like to work with. Okay, let's have a look at some of the watercolour paints I decided to get this time. I always have lots on my favourites list on Jackson's and um, I tend to add them if there's anything I see that I like or if my subscribers tell me that there's something I should be checking out. <laughs> and I think in this case, somebody told me, I can't remember who you were, but thank you, you told me to check out the um, Sennelier, is that what these are? Yeah, Sennelier um, Forest Green, which looked like my kind of colour, so I got that. And I also saw, while I was looking at their colour chart, um, that they had a greenish umber, which sounded really nice as well. So as I'm heavily into greens at the moment, I decided to get those too. So we'll swatch those out in the next video as well. So in here, oh, we have an assortment of things. Okay, first one, <laughs> surprisingly, another green. Um, Daniel Smith's Cascade Green, something that's been on my favourites list for absolutely ages. And I've actually lost count of the number of times I've been recommended this green. So I finally, finally caved in and I got it. So that will be really interesting to try that finally. So here we have Anthraquinone Blue. This is an M. Graham watercolour paint. Now this one has been on my favourites list on Jackson's for absolutely ages. I can't remember whether somebody recommended it to me. I think they may have done, but I saw it swatched recently in one of Sarah Burns Studios videos. <laughs> That's quite hard to say. Um, I'll put her name on the screen so that you can go and check her out. Her channel is really good. It's so interesting. She does a lot of outdoor painting and she works in acrylics and watercolour. She does a lot of landscape painting, so it's kind of right up my street. 
and um, she lives in Scotland and oh my goodness you get to see the beautiful Scottish coastline and countryside and it's just lovely but yeah she swatched this colour I really thought it was so beautiful it was even more beautiful than I thought it was going to be so after watching that video I finally bought it so the other paints in here are actually Roman Schmall full pans so let's have a look at them I'll just put this box over there so I decided to get shadow violet this looks like an absolutely gorgeous color really my kind of thing um, mineral violet which is brighter and I believe kind of separates out into different colors I think so um, and lapis lazuli everyone pronounces this differently <laughs> I actually went on google and asked it how to pronounce it and it said in British Eng British English yeah rather than American English it said um, it's lapis lazuli so <laughs> I think I'm pronouncing that correctly I did actually google it the other day so I may have forgotten I thought it was a really nice subtle color um, and I believe I saw it swatched out in one of Dr Otto Garno's videos I think it was her video um, Anyway, so yes, we will try these later. These actually look so nice together. This often happens to me. I don't do this intentionally, but um, yeah, I have a feeling they'll work well together. So in this one, we have a couple more watercolors. Um, oh yes, I know why I got this. Winsor & Newton Professional Payne's Grey is, I think so far, and I've tried many Payne's Greys, my favorite Payne's Grey. It has just the right amount of blue in it and it has a real depth to it that some of the others didn't seem to have so when i bought it before i purchased a small five mil tube this one is the big 14 mil um, because i'm getting through it quite quickly i'm using it a lot so um, they had this on offer actually um, they did like a watercolor sale and this was on offer so i thought i would grab a large tube while they had it on offer because Winsor & Newton Professional is not the cheapest of paints but they are incredibly good and in here we have another M. Graham this one you can see it's leaking a bit it feels very very sticky <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to put it back in the box and um, clean that up but I bought their neutral tint because I also saw this in somebody's video I cannot remember who but I've been looking for a neutral tint for a while and so many different brands do them and this one seemed to be um, the kind of neutral tint I was looking for so when we swatch that later you'll be able to see and um, yeah I'll clean that up so another watercolor I have here is this limited edition Schmincke Horridam Ocean Grey this was on my favorites list for a while and I went to buy it and it was out of stock so I had to wait to get this one I'm not going to try to pronounce the artist's name but this artist developed this with Schmincke and it is a beautiful as you can see slightly looks like a slightly turquoise um, grayish blue looks like a really interesting color I did see it swatched on I think it was Eve or Ev Bolt's channel um, I'll put her name up on the screen everyone I mentioned I'm going to try and put their names up on the screen and it was after watching her swatch of this that I actually decided to get it but yeah as I say I had to wait for it to come back into stock so yeah I'm very excited to try this um, I really like the box it comes in too usually their tubes don't come in a box like this but that's really nice and I love their logo with the owl so the other watercolor paint I have here is by the brand White Knights I haven't tried these but I know a lot of art youtubers who have and I saw somebody swatching the quinacridone rose at one point and I was just struck by how gorgeous and bright it was so it'll be very interesting to actually swatch this myself and see whether it lives up to the brightness I'm looking for I love quinacridone rose it's one of my favorite pinks and I do actually um, own this color in other brands but yeah I'm excited to try the white knights this is my first one as I say and they weren't too expensive I think this was 
either three or four pounds a tube, which seemed quite good. So another paint we have in here is um, this liquid charcoal by Schmincke. Um, this is the grapeseed black version, which I believe has a slightly bluish tinge to it. Um, they do three different versions, all slightly different. Um, this was quite expensive. This was nearly 18 pounds a tube. So this is why it's been on my favourites for a while and I haven't actually bought it because I wanted to make sure that I really did want it and that I'm going to use it. But I think it will be great for using as a base layer to work on top of. So working on top of it with Neo Colour crayons or coloured pencils. So I'm excited to try that and uh, see the different tones we can get as well because I guess if it's watered down it's much lighter and uh, yeah see whether it kind of smudges and how it looks when it's on the paper. So here we have just one tube of the Jackson's own brand Artist Acrylic Colour. I have some of their other paints and really love them so I thought naturally that I should get a Payne's Grey. <laughs> I have Payne's Greys um, in so many different brands but they're all slightly different and uh, yeah I figure you can never have too many of them so I decided to get this um, these tubes they're fairly large as you can see and I think they cost around five pounds which seems very reasonable for an acrylic paint um, that is artist quality not just student quality so um, I won't be swatching that in this video I'm going to be making a separate video about my acrylic paints very shortly I hope <laughs> I keep promising this. I want to make one on my collection of golden acrylic paints and also my whole art cart of acrylic paints. I thought it'd be quite interesting um, to show you the brands I use now and the colours I use because it's changed quite a lot over the past year or so. And uh, yeah, I've been investing in new, very high quality acrylic paints. And as I said, I really like the Jackson's brand, so I decided to Get that one so hopefully in a future video you'll get to see that swatched i must apologize for my voice by the way ever since i had tonsillitis <laughs> i have had a slightly husky voice um i don't know whether i'm slightly allergic at the moment too i kind of feel like i might be um and it's making my voice sound a bit croaky and a bit deep but hopefully that's not too annoying anyway let's get on with um the remaining supplies and I think next I'm going to show you, um, I can reach in here, <laughs> these pencils, these really chunky Stabilo woody three-in-one pencils. So they're kind of like a pencil, a wax crayon and watercolour in one. I do have a pink version. I've only previously bought one of these but I love it for layering over the top of paint and pen and coloured pencil it layers really well over everything and uh, yeah I'm using it quite a lot in my sketchbook so I thought I would get a black and a white you need obviously because they've got such a big uh, tip you need a special sharpener to sharpen them so what I decided to do now I have three of them because I haven't actually needed to sharpen the pink one yet um, they just seem to go on and on obviously you can't get much in the way of detail with them but they're great for mark making and uh, yeah, as I said, fantastic for layering. So anyway, as I have three, I decided that I would get the sharpener that goes with them. So here it is, this is what it looks like. Um, it wasn't too expensive, I think it was a couple of pounds and it's gonna be worth it if I can sharpen them because I didn't know how I was going to sharpen them. I guess you could do it with a knife, but I don't trust myself with a knife. So um, yeah, so I got that. So let's see what we've got in this box. Oh, I see a couple of luminants. Shake those out. There's four pencils in there, yeah. Just put that over there. Right, so we have um, two luminance pencils that I haven't actually tried before. So we've got yellow ochre and moss green. I thought they both looked like lovely landscape colours. So I decided to get those. And here we have something I didn't know existed until the other week when my friend Melanie Chadwick did an unboxing um, art haul on her channel and she had a couple of these pit oil base pencils. Um, 
I decided to get soft and medium because I think they were out of stock of the hard. I would have got a hard as well. I think I would have got all three. I think they also do an extra hard, but I went for the soft and the medium and apparently they work really well over watercolour. Mel was layering them in her sketchbook and I really liked the way they looked so defined and dark on the top of her watercolour painting that I decided to give them a go too because I'm, as we know, all about the layering. <laughs> so these are another interesting pencil to have. If something about this section of the video looks a little bit different to the footage you've seen up to this point, it's because I had to stop recording yesterday because I had other things I needed to do and it was also getting quite late in the day and the light is never as good. So I've left it until today, so it's like 24 hours later now and I'm just gonna finish off this art haul. I thought I'd better mention it in case it just looked a little bit different somehow or I sound a little bit different because I've noticed that when you're recording videos you sound um, different each time you do it which is strange some days I sound softer and some days I sound deeper and <laughs> anyway let's get on with the rest of the art haul okay so let's look at this next this is a concertina sketchbook by C. White of Brighton. I have some of their other sketchbooks and I quite like them. They're quite a good affordable sketchbook brand. So one of my subscribers, Matt, told me about these. Oh, it's like in a little, has its own little case. That looks really good. Um, and because I've been thinking about making zines and possibly making like a concertina style zine so that people could stand it up and have it as like an art piece as well as just reading it and looking at it. <laughs> um, I thought it might be quite fun to try to do something, see what I could do with a concertina sketchbook. So this was quite inexpensive. They feel really nice and sturdy, the pages. It's like two pages kind of stuck together, if you can see that. The paper looks really nice. That would be really interesting to try that out. Okay, so let's show you what I bought from, what was this, Pure Pens, I think. Um, I wanted a fountain pen because I saw my friend Melanie, um, one of her videos recently, she happened to mention working in fountain pen and also dip pens as well, I think. And I was really interested in this because I think it could be a really nice combination with the watercolor. Um, so I decided to get my first fountain pen since I'm trying to think it must be school because we used to have to use a fountain pen in school. Um, I've had a kind of calligraphy pen since then. I had that about 20 years ago and um, I used to do a little bit of calligraphy, but, um, yeah, this, um, was not too expensive. I think it was 18 pounds something. Um, I didn't want to spend too much money at first um, and I did some research on these pens uh, somebody on YouTube was using one and they said it had I think it's like a flexible nib so you can get like varying line widths with it so this is a Noodler's Ahab I think it's called um, and I got it in this gorgeous I think of this as being like a sea glass green color they do them in lots of different colors but yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to try this out and I will definitely record a video on this when I'm trying the pens out for the first time and um, I'll show you what they can do. It won't be in the swatching video that follows this one. I'm going to actually make a separate video because um, this is something so new for me and I think it deserves a video of its own. So yeah, this is the pen I got from Pure Pens and I also bought some ink to go with it, which I'll show you now. So this ink came recommended by another illustrator. Um, I can't remember his name. I did thank him on his video. He's not somebody who I had ever watched before. I was just searching for all things fountain pen and he recommended this ink as being very good. I wanted a waterproof ink because if I'm drawing and then kind of filling in a bit with watercolour. 
I didn't want the watercolour to disturb the ink. So apparently this ink is waterproof and it's especially for fountain pens because you have to bear that in mind. Not all inks can go in fountain pens. I'm really glad I learned this before <laughs> actually putting the ink in that pen. So yeah, this is the Diatramentis document ink in black. So in my search for a dip pen, I came across this one by Taki Kawa and this was from Colt Pens. It comes with this little plastic lid so you can leave the nib on and you can put that over the top. The nib um, came separately. This one is something like a, is it called a G nib or something like that? I bought two different types of nibs and um, I'll be able to tell you more about them when I make the actual video about these pens because Everything I researched was while I was ill and um, I know that I bought the right nibs for me but I can't remember what they're called and so I'll have to tell you all the details when I make the video about these pens. But yes, this one is one type of nib. Oh, it's going out of focus. That's one type of nib and I've already put it in there. This um, dip pen holder was actually See if we can get that to focus. It was really interesting because it has um, the ability to take larger and smaller nibs. So I thought it was worth getting this. It also had this lovely rubberized part of the handle, which I kind of felt would be more comfortable to work with. So that's one of my purchases from Colt Pens, and I'll just show you what else I bought from them as well. So I also bought this pack of three nibs. These are all the same. Um, this seemed to be a good all-rounder from what I could read about them. I'll be able to tell you exactly what they are in the pen video. But um, yes, yeah, so I got those um, and I have the other nib that's in the dip pen at the moment. So that's all I have currently. I thought I'll just start out with a couple of different nibs and see which ones really suit me before investing in any more. So during my research into inks, I noticed that these ones were mentioned quite a lot by different artists. I wanted them specifically for the dip pen, so they're good for that and they're also good for using with a brush and you can create washers with them and water them down slightly, which I thought would be a really nice idea because that means they're slightly more um, versatile. By the way, if you can hear Dominic knocking downstairs, he's renovating the kitchen. so. Any banging noises we'll just have to ignore. I'm sorry about that. Um, it's real life though. <laughs> but you can use these, by the way, in fountain pens as well. You just have to make sure that the fountain pen doesn't dry out. So if you're not using it for a while, you'd have to um, take the ink out and rinse it out. But yeah, these seem to be good all-rounders. I got one in a grey colour and one in black. So we'll be giving those a go in a future video. Okay, so let's have a look at these panels from Jackson's. I've unwrapped one of them so that we can have a look at it without lots of reflection so you can really see the surface. So I'm gonna put the other ones to the side and we'll have a look at this one. So I just bought three to try them out. Um, I bought an eight by 10 inch, a six by six inch and a five by seven. This is the five by seven. They seem really sturdy, apparently they're warp resistant and they have this grey ground that you can use um, for all media, so that'll be interesting. I'm planning on using them for acrylics, so I thought it would be nice to work on something like this for a change rather than canvases. So yeah, I'm going to give those a go. They weren't very expensive, they seemed quite reasonably priced. Very interesting, they feel kind of a nice quality. So I have high hopes for these. So you know how I love Royal Talon's Art Creation sketchbooks. They are my favourite sketchbook pretty much, apart from the Etcher cold pressed watercolour paper sketchbook. But they're two totally different types of paper. So I use the other ones for watercolour and these ones I tend to use for dry medium more than anything, but I have painted on them. And they do take paint quite well. They can't take a lot of water, but they're a really good quality sketchbook. This one is actually A4 size. I haven't had one this large before. I usually stick with, I think it's probably A5. Um, and it costs 10 pounds something, which seems really good 
for a really nice quality sketchbook of this size. They remind me a lot of moleskin sketchbooks, which are a lot more expensive. So um, for all of you asking which sketchbooks I use, they're the Royal Talons Art Creation. I love them and I'm very excited to try this larger one. So tucked down in the corner there, we have more pencils. <laughs> I bought um, a Stabilo All. I think I mentioned this pencil in my sketchbook video the other day because it's so great for going over the top of other pencils. So yeah, I got another white one of those. Um, it says they can write on paper, glass, plastic and metal. So I haven't tried all of those different surfaces, <laughs> but I can tell you that they go really nicely over the top of other pencils. So um, if you want to knock back the colour a bit or add a bit of texture or mark, these are really good. Um, I have some lumens here. These are just sort of restocks, these ones. I've got a couple of Payne's Greys because I get through those like there's no tomorrow. Um, I have a Payne's Grey 30% because, yep, that's another really popular one with me. Um, a Dark Flesh 40%. I've recently started using this colour and I'm really loving it. It's very subtle, kind of soft colour. Um, so yeah, we'll be swatching all of these so you can have a look at them. This is a new one for me. This is the Derwent Lightfast Forest. Look like a very interesting sort of it looks quite green on the end but it's I think a slightly brownish green but as I say we'll be swatching that this is a restock because this is one of my favorite Derwent Lightfast colors it's their purple but as you can see it's a very warm purple and I think I also mentioned this in the sketchbook video too um, I think I did. Really good for trees, love it for that. So it's not like a really bright, cold, bluish purple, it's very warm. And here we have a sepia, 50%. I love the Luminance sepia pencils. So we'll be swatching all of those in the next video. So we're down to the last two items now. And these pencils are new to me. They're something I learned about through Emma Carlyle. I think somebody had kind of recommended them to her and they sell them in this set of six, the Art Graph Soft Carbon. And um, she did like a demonstration of them on her Patreon. And I was intrigued by them because they just create the blackest black. And you can kind of, I think, smudge them a little bit. You can use them with water. Um, they go over the top of other pencils. Um, so yeah, I'm really intrigued to use these. I was very impressed when she was using them and I think they have become a new favourite for her. So yeah, I'm quite excited to try these. The banging is still going on. <laughs> it's chipping away at a floor down there and trying to get rid of the old, I don't know what he called it. It's not adhesive, kind of something that leveled out like a leveling compound or something. And it's trying to get back to the original floor. So it's a lot of work. Poor Dominic, it's very hot today as well. So this is the last item and this is quite an exciting one and it's going to get its own video because it's a palette from Schmincke. This is their Horodam watercolour, so this is their artist grade. And this is a special edition in a really lovely little leather case. Um, I don't want to open it today because I'm going to save that for the video. We will unpackage it and we will swatch all the colours and I'll create some artwork with it. I think that would make a really nice video. Um, I was intrigued by this though. I happened to see it on the Jackson's website. I didn't know that um, Schmincke brought out a special edition, apparently in a leather case each year around Christmas time. So it's usually around the end of the year, I think. Um, obviously I bought this in the summer. Um, Jackson said they had low stock, so I'm assuming they just had a few left. I also got it on a special deal, which was really good. This kind of swayed me to buy it really because I love Schmincke's paints and it was an intriguing collection because they have 12 half pans and they've decided to include a cool, a warm and a muted version of yellow, red, blue and green. So you don't have any earth colours in there, you don't have any browns. I have seen them swatched out and yeah, I was intrigued to try it. So I think this deserves a video of its own. 
and um, I'll create some artwork with it too to kind of show you how I'm going to be using it. Okay, so that's the end of this section of the art haul. As I say, the swatching video I will try to get up within a couple of days of this video being uploaded to my channel. Thank you all for watching. I think I've finished just in time because the sunlight is now streaming in and it would have just completely washed everything out. Um, thank you for putting up with the noise of the banging going on downstairs. Hopefully it's not too distracting. But um, yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll be back soon with the swatching part of this art haul.